During the time of editing this video, Lalibela has been taken over once again, and the lives of the people and the destruction of the buildings are at risk. I pray that by the time you are watching this, the sacred land will be back to normal and in one piece. Lalibela the Holy Land of Ethiopia. It's famously known for its incredible rock-hewn churches. It has been dubbed as the Second Jerusalem and is an established UNESCO World Heritage Site. Lalibela has faced several conflicts in recent times. Despite this, the heart of Lalibela still remains with its stunning landscapes, beautiful people, and deep spiritual rituals. I was really excited to return to visit the churches again and explore a little bit more of the town itself. During my stay, I was able to experience a celebration at one of the churches. I immersed in some of the local culture and stayed in a beautiful hotel. I also got to shop on the biggest market day of the week, which ended up turning into a whole other experience. Get ready to explore ancient architecture and learn about some of the unique symbols and meanings while getting introduced to a few of the beautiful souls I met along the way. For those of you who would like to travel here, it's a quick one hour flight from Addis Ababa to Lalibela. The town of Lalibela is located in the Amhara region of central northern Ethiopia. Once you arrive, you can hop on a cheap shuttle bus waiting outside. Once it fills up, you'll travel for about 30 minutes until you reach the center of Lalibela and then you'll either be dropped off at your hotel or close to it. As I said, this was my second time in Lalibela, and this time I chose to stay at Maribela Hotel. Welcome, Juice. Ah, I'm a second alone. <laughs> I just arrived at Maribela Hotel in Lalibela. It is a beautiful, beautiful hotel. Let me show you my room. After checking in, I had a very special visitor. I'm with Kidani. <laughs> You're right. I met him four years ago. Four years and a half ago. Yeah, almost. We have been friends. We met in Lalibela. We met in Lalibela. And uh, with uh, my cousins and my friends, uh -huh. we met and uh, uh, had traditional coffee in yes. my grandmother's you house. You invited me for coffee and popcorn, you remember? Yeah, popcorn. Uh-huh. You're right. But he was a, a little kid then, oh, and now yeah, he's he a grown man. No, no, I grew up, yeah. <laughs> You will not believe what he brought me, though. Show him, show him what you brought me. Uh, I met <gasps> Rosanna, and she's my best friend, and I met this. We meet Lalibala again. I'm really happy, and now I get a, I get a chance to give for my friend yeah, this gift. Yeah, it's so and beautiful. Really it's so beautiful. It's yeah. amazing. Let me show you. Shazana. Let's see. Yeah. So this is a picture I took in Lalibala uh, yes, yes. when I first came, so four and a half years ago. Yes. And... He had his friend paint it, and it's painted on like canvas with uh, with animal skin. skin. Animal skin. So yeah. cool! I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So you nice. are my friend. <laughs> Saturday is the big market. <laughs> this is a Saturday market in Lalibela. It's very, very busy, as you can see. Lots of people, and um, there's all kinds of things going on. So I'm gonna try to find a new scarf. This one I bought about four years ago, and um, so I want a new one while I'm here. So I'm gonna look for one. <laughs> As soon as I got out of the taxi, a man named Jamba approached to guide me around the market. I repeatedly said that I didn't need one, but he insisted and followed me around until I caved in. He ended up being a lot of fun and very helpful in my scarf hunting experience. All the market department is located one by one. For example, starting from here to up is a traditional clothes, hopes, plastic, and then more this side is Chinese. China? The Chinese product. The Chinese products are back there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. The made in Ethiopia. This is the plastic shoes. Okay. Uh, I'd like to take you around here. The, the hops. The hops. The hops. Yeah. Tella? Yes. 
So these are the the, the leaves for the uh, hops. Yeah. For the hops. Yes. This is what they make the alcohol. This is normally hops. <laughs> Where exactly to make a local beer. Make like the local beer. A local beer. Plus, okay. Uh, sometimes they, 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 they make a beer too, the packed one, why not, in your country too. They use okay. these hops, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, one of my favorite foods in Ethiopia is shido. And I've never seen what they actually make it from. It's chickpeas, but I've never like really seen it in person. So now these are the chickpeas. Okay, so now we saw the the chickpeas, and then once the chickpeas have been ground up, here is the shiro that is ready to be cooked. With nice with a lot of bees on it. And then we have the Burberry which is the hot pepper, and then some turmeric and all these other spices. The aromas in this market are so good. Betam konjo, right? Hmm? Betam konjo shuka. Betam konjo shuka. Yes, yes. I'm learning more and more and more to, uh, Amharic. <laughs> ah. Right here is the, the taff um, that they make the injera bread out of. So he's cleaning it. I've just learned that there's two different kinds. There's one that's a black taff and then a white taff. The black taff is more um, pure, it has more iron, it's more healthy for you. It has a little bit more of that sour taste, which I love. And then we have the white one, which I'll show you. Dananas? <laughs> okay. Amharic, tenish tenish. Take your time, don't worry. Okay, mm, this is the incense the for incense. the coffee. Yeah, when you take coffee yeah. Oh. So I am with the woman who sells the incense for the coffee ceremony. You light the incense during the coffee ceremony to give kind of like good smell good, to, good viber, to, viber to the whole, the vibe, nice. the vibe will be nice. So she's going to show me how she prepares it. She mixes a bunch of spices together. So. Yeah, exactly. Zen, I really love you. What is this? A perfume, yeah. Mm. Now I can do my own coffee ceremony. On the flight home, security took it out of my carry-on luggage and said I could not take it on the flight. Yes. And exactly they, yes. they work by the wave systems. Okay. And then ah, so wait, so now I'm with one of the the men who's trying to sell me a scarf, but he's giving me Ferengi prices, which means tourist prices. How much? It's about two thousand. Two thousand? No, I did not pay two thousand for this. No, I believe you. Better quality. I believe you. No, one thousand four hundred. So we're going to see, is he going to give me a good price? Are you going to give me a good price? Yes. And then from there, we take it to the tailor and get it sewn together. It's two pieces and you sew them together. Yeah, he make himself. You made it by hand? Yeah. He Can made I watch it. you make it? Can I watch tomorrow? tomorrow? Yes. Yes? Ah, yes. oh, we're going to watch him make a scarf tomorrow. You try for the make. Yeah, to, to, you will try to make. Oh, I will try to, to make? Wave. Ah! Now we're best friends. I'm yes. <laughs> a second hello. I Cheers. see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Ciao. Good. Good. <laughs> we are. We've seen a lot of the market, and now we are walking up the the hill find to the find the tailor. Get my nabu, nabala. Natala. 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 Son. A woman's scarf is called a natala, and a man's scarf is called a gabi. Okay, so I just bought my uh, brass cross. It's like an Ethiopian, one of the Ethiopian crosses. Yay! We found the tailor. He is gonna sew up my natula. We sew two pieces together to make it bigger, to make a, a really big scarf like this. He is changing the thread right now 
Charging me 50 burr. I'm a second alone. This little man right here. Man together. They want a ball. Huh? What did you said you want a ball? The jata. The jata to play with. To play, to play soccer, you said? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go buy a ball. Yeah. Oh, crap, crap, short, short. <laughs> yeah? That one's good? Yes. Yes? Okay. <laughs> Don't fight, play. It's almost 6.30 in the morning. I'm about to go head down to the churches. Supposedly there's some kind of early celebration today, so I'm gonna go check it out, but look at my morning view. I love it. Salam no. As we enter the holy site of Lalibela, I'll give you a quick little history of the churches. There are 11 churches that were carved from a single piece of granite rock by King Lalibela and, according to the legend, a few angels over 900 years ago. Here you will find two different clusters of the monolithic churches, each containing five buildings, and many of which are now covered for protection. And then you'll also see the famous House of St. George, which is off on its own. He built these churches as a place for Christian Ethiopians to make their pilgrimage. If you travel here during a special celebration such as Christmas, you will see hundreds of people that have made their weeks-long pilgrimages to get here, and in many cases by only carrying one satchel containing their food and necessities. There's so many symbols and meanings. St. Lalibela carved out different signs into the walls and made windows that have different meanings. There's passageways, there's underground alleys, there's caves, there's all kinds of cool things in these compounds. For instance, here are the windows of St. Mary's Church. The top windows symbolize the Holy Trinity, and then there is the window symbolizing Jesus coming down to the earth, and then the one of him being crucified. And then that's the womb of Mary. There's one window though that really piqued my curiosity. This window with the swastika cross. No, it doesn't have anything to do with Hitler. It was actually built before his time. Instead, it represents the cycle of life and the passing down of the traditions and religion from the elders to the next generation. So many details and so many like little hidden things. Like these crosses, I mean, just amazing. I love this place. The cost to enter is now $100, and it's good for unlimited visits for five days. When entering the grounds, the first church you will see is Bete Madhani Alam, which means the house of the savior of the world. It is the biggest monolithic church in the world. Before entering one of the churches, everyone is required to take off their shoes, and the women usually cover their hair and body with their big white scarves. You will often see people kissing the walls and doors of a church. It is because a replica of the Ark of Covenant is said to be inside each one, which represents the presence of God. You will also see people kissing the Bible and kissing a cross held by a priest. It is believed that they are receiving a blessing by doing this. I was here during the celebration of the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. During a service, frankincense is burned and spread throughout the church, and bells are rung which signal the beginning, middle, or end of a service. <laughs> the 
During these celebrations, people will chant and pray for hours. The priests use their long prayer sticks to help them stand up for the long periods of time. The gold instrument used in chanting is called a sistrum. And a little fun fact is that the rocking back and forth motion symbolizes Jesus falling down and then getting back up while he was carrying the cross. The drums that are used also have deep meanings. The drum itself symbolizes the body of Jesus, while the small end of the drum symbolizes the Old Testament and the large side symbolizes the New Testament. This man is counting his fingers. It was explained to me that he is asking for forgiveness in the name of the 12 apostles, and then 12 more times in the name of St. Mary. And then right in the middle of church service, the lights go out, the electricity goes out, but no one bats an eye. They keep on chanting and praying and continuing on like nothing ever happened. Outside of the church, there's more activities that are going on. There's a preacher who is preaching the word and people who are praying, reading their Bibles and getting blessings from the priest. After church, I was invited to have lunch with my new friend, Gazzaccio. What is this? Black tella. Tella, yeah. black tella. Can you tell me what it's made out of? It's making it with sugar and also Gibbs. We're creating a Gibbs in the... In the Gibbs? Yeah. Gibbs. Do you know about the Gibbs? No. Plants. A plant. Yeah. And it's alcohol. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's what the alcohol is made out of. Yeah. Did you know that it's too great? Because I have a second. I'm with my friend Gazzaccio. Yeah. And he has invited me for some homemade dorawat. Yes, dorawat. Dorawat, yeah. which is chicken. Chicken, yeah, chicken. So I'm very excited. I love dorawat. And with tella. Hmm? And with tella, homemade drink, right? Can I see? It's a tella, yeah. black tella. Black tella. Do we cheer or? Cheers, yeah. Almost like an aloha. Oh, it's good. It's, yeah. it's, it's good. good, yeah. Dorawa is literally my favorite food in Ethiopia. They cook it typically around celebration time because this dish takes such a long time to make. So good. Batam konjo. She's good. I am on my way to go meet the man who makes the scarf. I am wearing the one that I bought from him yesterday. So we will hopefully be able to see some of the behind the scenes process of how they get made. As you see in Lalibela, everybody wears them. I arrived at the home of Aden. Salamna. Salamna. Dinana? Dinish. Din. Salam Nacho. Salam man. Is this a family business? Yes. Everybody yes. in the family does? Yes. Family business. Is yeah. <laughs> is this your son? Uh, yes. Ah, oh, what's his name? Permanent. Permanent? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Oh. So this is at the very beginning. Yes. Fresh off the plant and then she takes all, all the seeds. Yes. Oh. oh wow, look at that. So cool. Oh, look at that. You work. Me work? <laughs> Come on. It is diff exactly difficult. 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 Yeah. Do it, do it. Uh, what, what do I do though? This? Just scream. No, no. no. <laughs> okay, this part. Yeah, do it, do it hard. Throw it, throw it. Throw, throw it. it down in there. Throw it down. <laughs> no, then. Throw it down. Throw it down. 
Uh, yes. Ah! This is what I say. This is what I say. So after after we take the cotton yes. and make it into basically stre uh, string or thread, from there it comes to here, right? Yes. First this yeah. one. First, first that one. Okay. Second this one. Okay. The uh, end. Yes. The third is to the bamboo. And the, the third, bamboo. they put it onto the bamboo, yeah. which then they can use to go onto the machine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Do you see this one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> you want to try? Yeah, I can try. Why not? And those and, do like and the socks and socks. Yeah. Shoes and socks. Yeah, because your pair of finger is working inside. Okay. Put put your finger. Slowly. Basically what's going on here is you attach some strings to your toes and then you're using your toes to make the machine go up and down and thread the scarf. <laughs> make one up, one down. One up and one down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this. So you go like this. Yes. <laughs> and then here you're supposed to toss the spool of thread through the strands of the scarf, but mine never makes it. <laughs> it's not it's not a problem why why you make out of it. Over. Back up. Ethiopian culture or Ethiopian bahal. Uh-huh. You wearing the girl. Mm-hmm. Now you go to the church. Okay. <laughs> Depending on the way the scarf is wrapped, anyone can tell where you are going, whether it's to church, a funeral, or even now visiting church, family. Right. Now I pray. Yes. And that's show me every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. The long way? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> We are at the butcher house about to have some tips, some fresh tips. Literally, he cuts the meat. Oh, I just got dripped on. And then he cuts it and then he's going to cook it. So it's going to be very, very fresh. They cooked the fresh tips and they invited me in to help cook. I guess stir the meat a little bit. I don't know. You know, you didn't do it in another house like that. Ah. Yeah, you cook it? Ah, yes. I good? Did you okay. smell yeah. something nice? So good. The spices? <laughs> come on, man, come on, man. This is another spices also. Mm. You take I'm not good. Let's try. Let's try? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got one. In. Touch, touch, touch. Wow. Oh, Zeze Bao. Bye. Thank you. I am at the most famous church in Lalibela. This is St. George. I don't know how I did it, but somehow I got the entire place to myself right now. Um, this church was built from one piece of stone and they started from the top and then they carved it going down. It is just, it's magnificent. It's, it's so, so beautiful. They say it's a representation of Noah's Ark. So there's three different layers to it, just like Noah's Ark. There's also 12 windows, which uh, signify the 12 disciples. Um, they found no tools here, so they're not really exactly sure how it was um, carved out. Very, very, very cool. A few steps away from the church, one of the guards was picking cactus fruit. He just picked the fruit off the cactus tree, and now he is using some leaves to wipe the thorns off. <laughs> he did get pricked a couple of times, though. It's a dangerous job. Eating cactus is a dangerous job. So he's peeling it. Oh, that one's yellow. Food. <laughs> I'm a second allow. Oh, 
Has these like little seeds in it? I pray for the safety of Lalibela's beautiful people and magical churches during these difficult times. Lalibela is soft yet strong, strong in their beliefs, strong in their faith, and strong in their spirit. Hail to Lalibela. <laughs> like and subscribe to see more videos and different cultures around the world.